Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a pleasure to be coming into your homes or on your job, on the street, wherever you may be, in a restaurant, wherever you may be, in the hospital, in the prison, wherever you may be. It's a pleasure to come to you with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And welcome you to the message of hope. I thank God for another opportunity given to me that we could share, give, I could share the word of God to you another time. He spared our lives, he spared your life to see today so that you could hear this word and make a conscious decision to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, make him your personal savior and Lord. Amen. The topic, the last time we were together, the topic was eternal life or eternal death and you and I we have to choose because we will spend eternity somewhere in one of two places either with the Lord Jesus Christ forever or separated from him forever right at this time I want to ask God to minister to bless us as I share his word father God I give you praise and I give you thanks for your goodness thank you for your mercy your love your grace your kindness and your faithfulness thank you for spared life my God, thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Bless it to our hearts today. Cause ears and hearts and spirit to be open and to be attentive to your word. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Last time we were together, the topic was eternal life or eternal death. Amen. And we all will have to spend eternity in one of two places. Either with the Lord Jesus Christ forever or with separated from him forever and today you have the opportunity to make your choice amen hallelujah um as also in the last time we were together i gave a definition that i read or i found out for eternal death and i also said then that is not something pleasant to talk about but hallelujah we got to talk about it because in the midst of life we are in death and eternal death it says here the future state the future state of those who reject the redemption or salvation or eternal life offered to them in christ jesus amen and it is plainly that is eternal death is plainly declared to be a state of conscious and that that that's a key word there conscious unutterable and endless torment and anguish and it brought me to the rich man and Lazarus and I debated I went through some of the things about the rich man and Lazarus uh, in Luke chapter 16 from verse uh, 19 to 21 amen hallelujah hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah i want to point out today some things about being in hell or hell what the rich man um encountered as he was there and listen to me he did not go there because he was rich hallelujah he left god out of his life he was more concerned about himself and those that concerned him his wealth he left God out of his life so we want to go into the word of God here Luke chapter 16 and we're still focusing on eternal life or eternal death and Jesus was speaking to those around him and he said there was this is not a parable and we are told there that this rich man he died and was buried but Lazarus he also died and he was carried into Abraham's bosom by angels hallelujah verse 22 tells us how one died and was carried by angels that's Lazarus and the rich man also died and he was buried verse 23 says and in 
hell. Jesus is speaking. He named the place where the rich man was. He was in hell. And there are some of us who are deceiving ourselves into believing there is no hell. Jesus Christ spoke a lot about hell, but he spoke more about heaven because this is what he came to tell us about, to get eternal life, to be with him in heaven. So he spoke more about heaven, he spoke more about eternal life than he did about hell and eternal death. Amen. Verse 23 is telling us that the rich man Listen, the rich man, he did not go there because he was rich. People do not go to hell because they are rich or because they are poor. No, because we reject Jesus Christ. People go to hell, die and go to hell because of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, rejecting salvation, rejecting Jesus Christ, rejecting the offer of salvation that God sent him on earth to give us. Amen. Hallelujah. So in hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torment. So hell, number one, hell is a place of torment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hell is a place of torment. Anybody who, everybody who died without Christ are in the place where the rich man is. And all the rich man experience, they are experiencing it right there, right now. To die without Christ, to die without salvation is hell. Come on. Hallelujah. He knew where he was. Hallelujah. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, plural, torments. Hallelujah. And it says here, he lifted up his eyes. So he was able to see. In, listen, you are conscious. You are conscious in hell. You are conscious in hell. He was able to lift up his eyes. He was able to see. Hallelujah. He was able to see Abraham. Hallelujah. And Lazarus. So in hell, the physical body, this physical frame dies. But the spirit lives on. And the Bible is telling us here, the rich man in hell lifted up his eyes. He was able to see. So in hell, people are seeing. Hallelujah. Let me say this too. You cannot be saved then. You cannot be saved then. You cannot be saved after. Because all the people who die without Christ in hell will not be part of the first resurrection. No, because you died without Christ. You're going to stay there after the, after the tribulation to be raised up. Hallelujah. To face the judgment. Hallelujah. The white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment to be judged. Hallelujah. So don't take this uh, slightly. It is not something, it's something to think about and something you must make a decision about that you do not want to go there. There's no escaping. You stay there after the first resurrection when the believers and the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ comes in there and take all those who uh, belong to him, take them out of here. Those who die without Christ stays there. They stay right there until after the seven years of tribulation. People will be living on earth after the rapture. People will be still alive. Hallelujah. People will be born then. People will also die. And people will have an opportunity to, to hear the gospel being preached then again. Hallelujah. Many will accept Jesus Christ then. And many will curse. Just as people doing today. Hallelujah. Because they are still in their sinful state. And people will curse God. Hallelujah. People will fret. They will curse. Hallelujah. And some will accept Jesus Christ then because the gospel will be preached. God will go to, to, the, to, the, to, to, to such a length to still give people then an opportunity to be saved. But the people who die without Christ remain dead, remain there in hell until after the seven, seven years tribulation. Amen. Hallelujah. So hell is real. Just as heaven is real, hell is real. Amen. 
And the Bible tells us that he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and he saw, hallelujah, you will be able to see, amen, <laughs> see Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So people who, who, who died in the Christ are in a place of comfort, hallelujah, their spirit are in a place of comfort. This physical frame would, uh, would have rot in the, in, the, in the grave, amen, but the spirit, hallelujah, remains alive in either place, either in hell or in a place called in paradise. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us first when he cried, hallelujah, people will cry in hell. Tears will flow. The Bible said he cried, hallelujah, and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. I remember last time I said, mercy is now, you know. God's door of mercy is open to all of us. Hallelujah. He gives mercy right now. His mercy is extended to all of us, to you, that you could cry unto him now. Don't wait until you get to hell and cry. It will be too late. Too late, too late shall be your cry. Too late. Hallelujah. Come on. Now is the time while you have the breath of life in you. Amen. The Bible tells us in verse 24, he cried, he's crying. When he should have cried for mercy while he was alive. He's waiting, he waited until he get to hell and asked for mercy. I remember I was saying, I said to, even if, even if, <laughs> even if they, they wanted to pity him, even if Abraham and Lazarus wanted to pity him and show him mercy, it was impossible. It was impossible because the Bible tells us there's a great gulf, there's a big separation. He wants, he's asking for mercy. And listen, another thing, besides being conscious, you're in conscious so you know where you are at, amen, you, you will cry, um, you will see, amen. And now um, you will thirst. There'll be thirst in hell because there will be, it's a burning place. There will be thirst in hell. And he's asking Abraham, have mercy. Listen, God, the, the door of mercy is open to you now. The door of mercy is open to you now. When you can cry now and ask God for mercy, to have mercy on you, to forgive you of your sins, to cleanse you, let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you. Let him wash you. Let him make you clean, make, make you accepted in his beloved. Hallelujah. And give you eternal life. Eternal life. Those who die without Christ cannot inherit and will not inherit eternal life. Cannot. Don't gamble with your soul and wait until some, some other time, some other time uh, uh, when you die. Some people think where you, you, in, in, in between is a place where you go until. There's no, rest, there's no place in between. There's no purgatory. There's no place called purgatory. No. There's a gulf, a great gulf, fixed between those who are in paradise and those who are in hell. And those who are in paradise cannot come over. So even if Abraham and Lazarus wanted to show this young man some mercy, some pity, and carry some water for him, they just couldn't because they couldn't cross over. He in hell couldn't cross over to where paradise is. Neither those in paradise could have crossed over to give him any water. Come on. He said, send Lazarus that he may dip his finger. He didn't ask, he's not even asking for a cup of water. He dipped his finger and put a drop of water on his tongue. Amen. To cool his tongue. Hallelujah. Because he's saying, I am tormented in this flame. Hallelujah. Flame, fire, flame. He's tormented. And all who die without Christ are tormented in the flame. Wherever they are, where they are. Now is the time. Now is the accepted time. Now is the time to accept Jesus Christ. Not when, uh, when you're dead, you're done. Yeah, you're done in a sense here. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a good statement in the sense, you know. You're done as far as eternal life is and being saved is concerned. When you're dead, you're done. As far as it's kind of true in a sense. As far as experiencing eternal life and experiencing salvation, that's it. You're done. That is, that's it. Yeah. When you're dead, you're done. 
That's it for you if you die without Christ. Let that is true to a point. <laughs> because as far as inheriting eternal life and salvation, being saved, experiencing the new life in Christ, that's it. You cannot get that again. Nobody in hell could get that again who died without Christ. So he's saying, send Lazarus. Still talking eternal life or eternal death. Which one? It's forever. Forever. Just as people would be living forever with the Lord, people will be in hell forever. In torment forever and ever and ever. And if it would, would be a, a million years and you could come out, you might feel comfortable and say, okay, after a million years I'll come out. But there's no coming out. It's forever and forever. Send him, send Lazarus to tip just his finger, you know. He didn't ask for a cup of water. He did not ask for so much for the way he treated Lazarus. Just let him, let, let him give me a finger, uh, tip, uh, tip his finger in water and just put a drop on my, to cool my tongue. Because he's parched. There's no water. There's no juice. There's no liquor. There's no wine. Hallelujah. In hell. He's parched. His throat is dry. His saliva almost dried out. Say, I'm tormented to cool my tongue. Heat. Heat in his tongue. His throat is parched. Because there is heat. And verse 25 says, But Abraham said, Son, remember, remember, remember. <laughs> call, to remem call, call to your memory. Call back to your memory. Bring it back into remembrance. Yeah? You, you lived it up. You lived it up. You had it all made while you were alive. You had all that you wanted while Lazarus, hallelujah, hallelujah, didn't have anything. Now you are tormented. Hallelujah. You receive all your good things. Live it up. Have all that you need. But don't leave Christ out of your life. You think God doesn't want you to have money? Yes, he wants you to be rich. He wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to be educated. He wants us to have things. But we must also have Jesus. He's our main man. Hallelujah. We must have him in our lives. We must have him in our homes. We must have him on our jobs. We must have him in the marriage. We must have Jesus. He must have first place in our lives. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And Abraham is saying in verse 25, Son, remember. So he's telling him to remember. You, can, you will remember. In hell you will remember. The time that you, 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 you despise the gospel. These times that you, you said no to Jesus. You remember every gospel message that would be, was being preached. You remember every track that was given to you. Gospel track that was given to you and you tore it up. Uh, you remember how you cursed the Christians, the believers, those who came with the word of God. You will remember how you shut your door on them. Hallelujah. You would remember. Hallelujah. He says, remember. Son, remember. Remember that you in your lifetime had all your good things. You had everything you, you need. Hallelujah. And, and Lazarus, evil things. Hallelujah. And now Lazarus is comforted, but you are tormented. Amen. And verse 26, he went down to explain to him, even if they wanted to help him, they just couldn't. Because there's a great gulf, fixed separation, that they couldn't come over to him, even if they wanted to. And Lazarus couldn't go over to them. Hallelujah. And here he's going to, he's, he's going to ask, he's going to um, ask Lazarus, ask Abraham. Remember his brethren, he's going to preach, he's going to, he's a missionary now, evangelist in hell. He's saying, look, you know, um, send, send, that you'd send, send Lazarus to his father's house. He's saying, send, if, if you can't come to help me over here, I have some brothers, I still have brothers out living over there, I still have brothers. Yeah, if it's, if you, I want you to send, send Lazarus to warn my brothers so they don't come to this place where I am. He's evangelizing. He's, he's remembering now he has brothers. And he would not want them. Imagine that. So it's a place that you wouldn't want to go. It's a place. If this guy is saying, look, this place is so terrible. 
I do not want my brothers to come here. You know, sometimes some people have such a bad sick, bad, bad, bad bout of illness. And they would say, listen, I don't even want dog to get this sickness. I don't even want a dog to get this sickness. Sometimes the flu, um, that flu comes down on them so, so terrible. And they say, boy, I don't even want dog. Or they say, I don't even want my worst enemy to get this sickness. Because it is so terrible. And if this guy, the rich man, in hell is saying, I do not want my brothers to come here. It's a place of torment. And that will go on forever. Send and warn them. <laughs> Send and warn them. You are being warned now. Take warning. Don't go to hell. Don't plan to go to hell. Plan to go to be with Jesus. Accept Jesus Christ today as your personal Savior and Lord. All you have to do, confess your sin. Humble yourself. Humble yourself before God. Humble yourself in the presence of God. Humble yourself. Some of us, we're too stuck up. And we think we're too great. And we think we have too much. Hallelujah. All that you have, all that I have, come from God. He's our source. Amen. Come on. Humble yourself. Confess your sins before God. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. Ask God to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him to wash you with his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. And make you his child. Don't plan to go to hell. He, this man is saying he don't want you to come here. The man, the rich man in hell is saying he doesn't want you. He doesn't want me or anybody to come there because it is a place of torment. He said, I don't want my brothers to come here. Send Lazarus to warn them that they don't come here. But nobody will go from there. Abraham said, listen, even if we send somebody from the dead, they wouldn't believe. They have the preachers. They have all the preachers. They have all the ministers of the gospel. They have all the evangelists. Come on, let them hear them. You must take warning today, people. Take warning. Jesus will come again. He will take out those who belong to him, those who accepted him, those who are serving him in spirit and in truth. He is going to take them out, all those who are in the grave, those who are alive. He will take them all up to be with him. The dead, those who died without Christ, remains there. They remain there in their position until after the seven years of tribulation on earth where people will go through a lot of trouble, trial, trials, worse than it is now. Don't plan to go through the tribulation. Plan to go up with the Lord Jesus Christ when he should come. Plan to go with him in the rapture. Hallelujah. Which could take place any day, any time, any moment. There's no sign, but we can look. When we look around, we can see things that are happening that's pointing to the soon coming in the air of the Lord Jesus Christ. But no sign. He could come any moment, any time. As we have read, the day is already appointed. He has appointed the day. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So he's saying, send, send, send Lazarus. Send Lazarus. He, the man in the rich man in hell is saying, he don't want you to come there. It's a place of torment. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to go there. Not even Jesus Christ doesn't want you to go there. Because the hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, those who were cast out from heaven. He he he, he tried to overthrow God. He was cast out and he took one third of the angels with him. Come on. And they were cast out. It Hell was prepared for them, not for you and not for me. You can make your choice today to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord and inherit eternal life. Inherit eternal life. Inherit eternal life. Hallelujah. It is yours. You have to choose to take it. Amen. And so he said, 
Let them hear the prophets. Let them hear the messengers of, gospel, of the gospel. Today you, you are hearing, and you have been hearing. You have been hearing, you have been hearing time and time again. Hell is real. There are many scriptures in the Bible that relate to hell, that tell us that hell is real. I cannot give them all to you, but you can go through the word. Go to your Bible, you have a concordance. Go there and look, look up all the, the, the references for hell. Hell is real, just as heaven is real. Today is your day. Make a choice to serve the Lord Jesus Christ before it is eternally too late. Hallelujah. Eternal death or eternal life. What's your choice today? Choose Jesus as your personal savior. And Lord Father God, I give you praise and I give you thanks today. Thank you for your words, simple and plain. Hallelujah. Cause men today, oh God, cause them by your Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to draw close to you, to draw near to you, to come to you in repentance. Hallelujah. I pray that the spirit of repentance uh, will fall upon them, will come upon many souls today, that they will turn to you, asking you to forgive them of their sins, uh, to cleanse them, hallelujah, and to make them your child, to make them your children in the name of Jesus. Touch heart, touch lives today. Save precious souls, oh God. For this is why Jesus Christ came. He came to seek and to save that which He's still saving. And today, I thank you for those that you are saving. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise God. The Lord bless you as you continue to view the message of hope on TIN every Wednesday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Cynthia Forbes. We invite you to tune in to the Tobago Inspirational Network for the message of hope.